All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to show you how to calculate the sum of one plus one over three squared plus one over five squared, etc., etc., using two ways. One by using doing it directly, the other one by using Basel's formula. So let me first show you the direct method because it's very fun. So method one, consider the function f of x equals one on the interval 0 comma pi and let's try to expand f uh, in terms of cosine so let's try to write f of x as a sum from m from 0 to infinity of a m cosine of 2m plus 1 over 2x it looks scary but all this is saying is the following this is a 0 cosine of x over 2 plus a1 cosine of 3x over 2 plus a2 cosine of 5x over 2 dot 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 so just cosine of odd multiples of one half and the nice thing is it turns out all those cosine functions they're perpendicular which means it's very easy to find AM because AM is just given by a dot product. So AM is just F dotted with cosine, but here dot means integral. So integral of uh, from 0 to pi, because here we have 0 to pi, of F, which is 1, times this cosine function, cosine of 2m plus 1 over 2x over the integral from 0 to pi, right here, sorry, dx if you want, integral from 0 to pi of cosine dotted with itself. So this just becomes the integral from 0 to pi of cosine squared of 2m plus 1 over 2x dx. So let's try to evaluate this first of all to see what we get. So so the numerator first of all becomes the integral from 0 to pi of cosine of 2m plus 1 over 2x dx and this you can evaluate so this becomes sine of 2m plus 1 over 2x but you know, use a Chen Lu so uh, this becomes 2 over 2m plus 1 and you evaluate this from 0 to pi now, if you evaluate this as 0, you get sine of 0, which is 0. So you're just left with sine of 2m plus 1 over 2 pi times 2 over 2m plus 1. Now, what is this? It's just sine of odd multiples of pi. So think sine of pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2, etc., etc. And notice, if we're on the top, sine is 1. If we're on the bottom, sine is minus 1. So it turns out this becomes minus 1 to the m. Always check this. So in the end, we get 2 over 2m plus 1 times minus 1 to the m. So that's already one part of it. And then for the next part, let's evaluate the denominator. So the denominator is the integral from 0 to pi of cosine squared of this. But for this, we have to use, if you want, the half angle formula. So this becomes 1 half plus, I believe, cosine of 2 times this. So 2m plus 1 x uh, over 2. Dx. It doesn't matter because this integrates to sine. So this becomes x over 2 plus sine of 2m plus 1 x over 2 times 2m plus 1 
from 0 to pi. But here's the thing, sine of odd multiples of pi, that's 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So you're the weakest link. Goodbye. And you're left with pi over 2. Great. And now that we have the numerator and the denominator, we can evaluate AM. So AM is just the ratio of the two things that we found. So 1 was minus 1 to the m, I think 2 over 2m plus 1. The other one was pi over 2. So if you calculate this, this becomes 2 to the minus 1 to the m over 2m plus 1, and then times 2 over pi. And in the end, what we get is 4 times minus m to the 1 over pi over 2m plus 1. So that's one thing. Now, why is this useful? Remember, we calculated 1 to be the sum of am cosine of, uh, I believe, 2m plus 1 over 2x. Again, those functions, they're all perpendicular, which means that the Pythagorean theorem is true, or what's called here Pasevas theorem. In other words, if you take the length of this function 1 squared, it's the same as taking the length of this squared, so am squared, times the length of cosine of 2m plus 1 over 2x squared. Now, what does the length mean? It just means the function dotted with itself. So. Uh, 1 dotted with 1 is just the integral from 0 to pi of 1 times 1, which is 1, which in the end we get pi. And this length, all this is, is just the integral from 0 to pi of cosine squared, 2m plus 1 over 2x. But we just calculated this to be pi over 2. And therefore, what do we get? We get that, again, length of 1 squared was this integral. So we get pi equals sum over m. Let's say from m from 0 to infinity. What did we find for a m? We found that this was 4 times minus 1 to the m over pi times 2m plus 1. So this squared times this length squared, which is pi over 2. So careful, you do not square that. And then in the end, all we need to do is clean this up. And we get pi equals sum from m from 0 to infinity of 16 over pi squared, 2m plus 1 squared, times pi over 2. So there's a nice simplification. This factor of pi cancels out. And then 16 over 2, that becomes 8. So in the end, we get pi equals 8 over pi sum, let's see, uh, sum from m from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2m plus 1 squared. And lastly, solving for this sum, we just get uh, our final answer is as follows. Sum from m from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2m plus 1 squared becomes pi times pi over 8, and that's pi squared over 8. How cool is that? And before I move on to the other uh, method, I just want to say I know it's weird to have this cosine of odd multiples of uh, 1 half, but actually the cool thing is those functions do appear in nature. For instance, if you're trying to solve the heat equation, ut equals uxx, but with mixed boundary conditions. Well, you say, for instance, u of 0 t equals 0, but let's say u x of pi t equals 0. Then actually, so mixed Dirichlet Neumann boundary conditions, so that's actually where this cosine magically appears. 
very exciting. My PDE students were not that excited about this, but still. And now lastly, let me show you the second method. It's shorter, but I think less interesting. Well, start with Basel's formula, which just says that the sum from m from 1 to infinity of 1 over m squared equals pi squared over 6. What, what is that? That's 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 5 squared da, 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 equals pi squared over 6. But now the nice thing is we can split up this sum into even numbers and odd numbers. So that becomes 1 plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared plus dot 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 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 4 squared plus dot 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 equals pi squared over 6. And by the way, we're allowed to rearrange this because this series converges absolutely. So we can absolutely do that. And there is another video on this if you're interested about the details. But here's a cool thing. So this is our answer. So our answer plus, so let's write this in terms of m, sum from, let's say, m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2m squared equals pi squared over 6. But this just becomes sum of 1 over 4m squared. It's almost e n. <laughs> It's almost E equals MC squared. But the nice thing is, well, we have our answer plus 1 fourth sum from M from 1 to infinity of 1 over M squared equals pi squared over 6. But look at that. This is another Basel formula. So we get answer plus 1 fourth times pi squared over 6 equals pi squared over 6. So our answer then just becomes 1 minus 1 fourth pi squared over 6. And that's 3 fourths pi squared over 6, which you can simplify to pi squared over 8. So same answer, different method. The first one is more direct. This one requires you to know uh, Basel's formula. But other than that, uh, it's good. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. <laughs>